All right, number six was one where several teams had a problem. And um, let's think about this. Suppose that Pipmeister Incorporated, Pips are the little dots on a ping pong paddle, is a firm that produces the special asymmetric ping pong paddle. If the firm's unit costs are constant at $5 per paddle, which of the following is the isoprofit function for a profit of $100,000? So we need to know what the expression for profits are. And remember from the reading, profits are price minus average total cost or unit costs. Here they're constant at $5 a paddle times the quantity produced. And an isoprofit function is a, is a function in the price quantity space. And we see some things where we, that are promising. We've got a price and a quantity, and we're no, we're, we know we're going for a function in that space. But what do we do about this third variable? Well, these are isoprofits. Profits are constant at $100,000. So the profit function for $100,000 will be 100000 equals um, P minus 5, the quantity, times Q. All right, well, now we're, we're in business because we've got an expression that has just in terms of P and Q. So now our, our task is to isolate um, price. Remember, we've got price on the price as the y-axis variable, quantity as the x-axis. So let's divide both sides by Q. And of course, these Qs cancel, and we're left that with P plus 5, sorry, P minus 5 is equal to 100,000 divided by Q. We can add 5 to both sides, and we get P equals 5 plus 100,000 over Q. And um, that makes B the right answer. All right, number eight was also one that some teams missed. Let's talk about that since we're here. Which of the following is a reason that there might be diseconomies of scale in a firm's production process? Let's examine these. Go to the pointer. Um, with increases in output, the intensity of supervision increases. Well, actually, that's true, and, and that's going to mean um, higher costs with increases in output, and that's the definition of diseconomies of scale. So right out of the gate, A is looking pretty good. We better uh, look at B, C, D just to make sure. Large firms are able to purchase their inputs on more favorable terms. That's true, but that's, that's an economy of scale, not a diseconomy of scale. So B is out. Let's turn to back to a pen and eliminate B. A firm's lobbying effort for special treatment are a fixed cost. That's true. So as output increases, that fixed cost can be spread over more and more units of output smaller unit, smaller increases in unit costs, that gives bigger firms an advantage. Typically, the higher our fixed costs, the bigger, the more the bigger firms have an advantage. And finally, the, the volume of a bat uh, increases um, more than proportionally with surface area. And uh, turns out that's a, that's a big reason for economies of scale. Costs tend to follow surface area, which goes up with the square um, it, you know, it's, it's in terms of square inches. Volume is in cubic inches, and um, volume goes up as a cubic fun function. So um, volume goes up much faster than, than square inches as you, say, build a bigger pipe or build a bigger vat. And for that reason, uh, a lot of processes um, that involve producing liquids, beer is one of them, but, but many chemicals... Um, refining petroleum, they're featured by scale economies, economies of scale. Bigger firms have lower costs. So A is the only, the only horse left in the race. Once we consider that carefully, A is the answer to number eight.